do you know that the kubernetes state is stored in a database which is a key value store and in most cases you might have heard it is etcd but there are cases when it is sqlite as well which is more for a lightweight solution so in this video let's explore how and what b cluster provides out of the box so etcd is the most recommended backend for the production kubernetes scenarios now from v cluster 0.20 which went ga some time back we did a uh, office hours as well and there is a video showcasing the latest features one of the features is that by default the kubernetes distribution that gets created is k8s with sqlite as the default database but when you switch to v cluster pro and you enable the pro features there is one feature that you can use embedded etcd instead of sqlite so yes sqlite is lightweight and it's good for development environments and development cluster but when it's come to production when it comes to distributed operation when it comes to multi node coordination uh, scalability large scale deployments that you do uh, then it becomes difficult to work with sqlite also sqlite is a single file database it doesn't have any inbuilt fault tolerance and redundancy so yes there are some tools some external tooling available to create the fault tolerant scenarios but etcd out of the box supports uh, clustering and leader election for high availability uh, so in v cluster there is there are three paths and three ways one is the default one when you just install v cluster uh, open source and you just create the virtual cluster you will get k8s distribution and with sqlite now for enhanced performance enhanced scalability consistency uh, and ease of maintenance in the production environments one of the pro features of v cluster helps you to use embedded etcd for your v clusters so and there is the easy path like i'll show you how you can actually enable that there is one more step ahead that you can use is you can use an external database so you can have uh rds or managed postgres and use that also for your v clusters that is even better for your disaster recovery and extreme high available v cluster scenarios so right now i have a simple kubernetes cluster which is a two node kubernetes cluster 1.31 and what we want to create is we want to create virtual clusters so first i have a demo yaml which is a v cluster configuration file in this i have specified control plane distribution gates version should be v1.31 that means the virtual cluster that should come up should be of version 1.31 yes you can specify the kubernetes version that you want to use and you can have different versions of virtual clusters running on the single host cluster so let's create this particular virtual cluster so v cluster create in the namespace demo and let's name it sqlite because by default i want to show you that when we create a virtual cluster the backend that is being used is sqlite so the v cluster is up and running we can switch to the new tab and do kubectl get pod cipher a and we can see the v cluster is up and running kubectl run nginx hyphen hyphen image nginx the pod gets created kubectl get pods and we are able to see it's in container creating state kubectl config get contexts let's switch back to the original one the host cluster config use context the main thing that we need to see is the default behavior over here so what we'll use is kubectl exec uh, in the namespace demo sqlite 01 and we are gripping sqlite so we can see that sqlite is the backend for this particular virtual cluster now let's go back and create a new one so before doing this what you need to do is you need to do a v cluster platform start i have already done this step this is a pro only feature so let's see the yaml file for that in this now we are specifying that for the control plane backing store we want the embedded etc to be enabled as true so but once a backend has been created you cannot switch the backends you can always create uh, with these ones there is also another option for external database for example if you can have managed rds or managed postgres instance running 
and you can also use that as the backend for your virtual Kubernetes cluster. Let's use embedded etcd. So let's create a virtual cluster. We cluster create hyphen n demo two etcd demo hyphen f demo two. So it is creating a new virtual cluster in the demo two namespace. So our cluster is up and running. And if we do kubectl get port hyphen a, yes, it is running. kubectl run nginx hyphen hyphen image nginx. The pod also gets created and uh, the next one is by switching the context. So let's switch the context and let's try to see in the demo to etcd demo namespace the pod which is there. We can see that it is now using etcd. So as we have discussed before, the several benefits of having etcd as the backend store for production scenarios um, and also you can use the even more high available scenarios. You can use the external database that can be Amazon RDS. So that's it for this particular video. I hope you got a gist that by default in the virtual cluster using the cluster creates SQLite as the backend and for production ready scenarios, you can go for the pro and do the embedded ETCD or the external database. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any specific questions or doubts about vCluster, feel free to join our Slack channel or also comment on this video. We'll try to create another set of video for that particular topic. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.